We won't see the whole variation. I will just ask you for the first move. I want to see who remembers this. Aha. L008, Daniel Gordon, legendary GM Brian, and uh, Ken King Sam, Happy Pawn, and many other people remember this. Aha. Very nice. They missed this in the game. Black, uh, I mean, White had a Grandmaster on the hook in this game, but they missed it. And uh, it was later on uh, a draw this game. I forgot this problem, says Salfeng. Yeah, Legendary Goat, I remember this. Yeah, nice. It's good that you remember. This means that you have been paying attention when we saw it last time. So, uh, yeah, I'll ask uh, who was fastest here. L. All right, L, you can show us very briefly what was uh, this about. Uh, assigned white. Yeah, please go ahead. So rook b2, that was a key move. We need to stop this uh, check on b3. In the game, I think they hastily played king b6 and black was able to... Was that the game? But it, this No, this was not the game, right? But this was the drawing technique that we will just keep on giving checks. Uh, checks. Krastev, exactly. Yeah, good memory by Happy Pawn. Yeah, Magnus lost today. Interesting game. White played very well in that game, I must say. I have used uh, such a system with black many years ago, but uh, yeah, usually you don't end up that, uh, what can I say, that restrained as he did in the game, that headshot formation. And the other move, which was very tempting, was this one, right? But this was not uh, correct because black found something here. Yeah, I'll just quiz your memory. Black's best move, anyone? Mm -hmm. Gordon, legendary, JM. Mr. Cheeky Dude, that's a funny handle. L008, uh, Hollow Blade, Brian, John Sam, and so on. That's right. Yeah, King F8 won't, uh, won't work. Uh -huh. um, yeah, very interesting games, by the way, in the Qatar Masters. I can definitely rec recommend a look at those games. Fantastic uh, games. Also, Nakamura had a nice Italian game today, for example. Um, I was checking some of those games. Uh, interesting. Some, some other upsets also. So anyway, let's ask somebody here. Uh, Connor, you can tell us. What do you think, Connor? What should black play here? Before ta Of course, before taking the pawn, we should play f2. We can't do it right now, of course, due to the skewer. So we first play the move f2. So this is what white missed in the game. And then it was, then it was, uh, yeah, white went on to play here for 50 moves, but it didn't make much sense. Grandmaster Pelletier made a draw here. But we were saying, like uh, L was explaining, that we should start with the move rook b2. But that's not an easy move to, to play. I mean, last time we did this, a few people got it right. Difficult to see this move. But it's exactly our topic, no restriction. We're trying to limit our opponent's ideas. We don't want them to play rook b3. So we had some interesting variation here. I think I played king f7. Yeah, he got crushed. Yeah, it was very nice, nice game. I like this queen. That was a queen maneuver. I don't know if you saw that. Queen b3. I like that little move, queen b3. I will check the game more carefully later. Queen, they, they move the queen to the h file, I think, queen h3. Anyway, yeah, let's let's continue. Did you play? Uh, no. Uh, where is uh, L? L, did you disappear? Oh, here is L. So please go ahead, L. You can show us since, since you remember this. You win this uh, without much effort, yeah. But there was one tactic that we had to see, right? If you remember the tactic, aha. Uh -huh. I thought this was a very nice example. I think, was this maybe Karsten Müller who showed this example? I, I don't remember. Very nice example. So Black is almost making a draw here. But then comes this fantastic move by L, uh, which means that Black has to do one of two bad things. One, to take the pawn, which means that this pawn runs. Or two, to take it with the king, which means that White can then... Um, eliminate the f the dangerous f pawn. So I think this was the only thing to play here. And I remember that somebody said something interesting last time. Somebody said this, right? And I actually checked this later. I don't like uh, how do you say loose uh, knots. I like to to have the uh, complete understanding of things. So I checked this later. I checked this later, and it was actually like I said. I think last time, black's only drawing move here. What would that be? Black's only way to draw. Yeah, of course, L. It's a, it's, a, it's a silly move to think of, rook takes f3. But the resulting position is very interesting. All right, uh, legendary goat, you got it. I think that's the only move uh, for black here. No, I don't think you should take that pawn. Maybe I'm missing something. Or do you have some smart tactic there or something? I think you're almost lost there, or no? Maybe I'm missing something. We will see. Uh, we will see. So this we talked about very briefly last time, but I think some of you were already leaving or, or, or something, or you were tired maybe, so... We didn't talk about it so much. So just one thing before we continue. What L says is, of course, true. 
it's insane to play this move rook takes f3 it's, it's insane to play it of course but we can play it in this move or though instead we wait with this move rook takes f3 until we're sure that they will have to take with the rook so that we can quick but it's still interesting to analyze what happens here so let's ask uh, uh legendary goat how would you continue here with the black pieces uh legendary oh sorry i gave you the wrong the wrong color yeah like that right okay so what do we have to play here exactly we have to give the check now so that when i move the king somewhere we can simply come back right or i don't know if you want to give another check but else i would just go back to make a draw here i don't know if we if we're on the same page uh uh legendary or yeah it's a draw but you have to be very precise uh patriots uh -huh, or whoever said it, 206 okay i don't get any moves from yeah exactly yeah we go back with the rook so the point is that now since we didn't take if they take or if they push now we can take and we we make a draw right because the pawn doesn't queen they can play something like this but we could play like that and we will bring in the king and we will make a draw here ultimately but if we get the move order wrong if you start with um taking the pawn if you take the pawn instead um now it's not working anymore because now as you can see when you come this way, I can play that. Let me know if I missed something, but I think this is the big difference now. If the second pawn can reach the seventh rank, this technique doesn't work anymore. So, oh, I asked this last this last week, says 206. Then I'm happy that we finally solved it now. So small subtleties, small subtleties. This check, it's not like a random check. It's simply the fact that they are about to create a second pass pawn. If we play like this, we have the sneaky plan of just going back. We talked about this quite a lot, right? Tying the opponent's pieces to their pawns. That's basically what we're doing here also. They don't have like a safe haven for the king. Obviously, they cannot go They cannot go this way <laughs> because then we would run with that pawn. That I think we talked about last time, right? Yeah, somebody said this. Somebody said it. This would be a way to kamikaze continuation. Now black wins instead because you can swing over the rook at, at the right moment, right? Something like this. I think that's, that's what we were... Oh, no, 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 no. I, I made this mistake last week, I think. I made this mistake just to see how we can learn from our mistakes. I forgot that white is queening with check, right? Yeah, so that's not correct. So anyone, anyone, would you mind suggesting a move for black here? Yeah, just king f2. Random king move uh, as long as you step out of there and you keep the e file clean. And now we're winning, right? Took to logic. And in the end, they get their queen, but not for long. So. That was a complex, uh, yeah, no problem, Chesot. Yeah, that was a complex uh, endgame, <laughs> very complex. We made it more complex deliberately. But anyway, what I wanted you to understand here was simply Rook B2 trying to prevent the opponent's plan of, of interfering with our plan and so on. Okay, let's continue. We will do two more sessions on this topic of restriction. Uh, today, I think, it, I'm afraid it will be only Rook endgames. I hope. You're not sad about that. I know that you like more maybe attacks and sacrifices and things like that, but this is very useful. It comes up in many, many games. Uh, when we are in the Rook endgame, we usually don't have much time on the clock. So it's important to know things uh, more or less from, from before. So that's my plan. And then next week we will look at some more, yeah, what can I say? Not Rook endgames, but more crowded endgames, right? So. Let's do this quickly. Uh, I have many examples, but uh, they are not very difficult. So we will start with a game. Oh, it takes ages to load this. I don't know why. Um, wait for me just one moment. Yeah, now it came up. So this is a game, Rapport with White, Shevchenko with the black pieces. Uh, please notice, guys, this pawn goes that way, else this would be a good move for black. So you're playing with the black pieces. Rook and games are very difficult. Yeah, I agree. Very difficult. So I'll ask you just for blacks. First move here, I think, in the game. All right. I think 30 seconds is enough for you to find Black's first move. Exactly. L, Gordon, Mr. Cheeky Dude, JM Chess. Wow. So many people found this. Nice. Simple technique, no? Very useful technique. If you played something else, uh, there is one other way to do it. But uh, yeah, this should be like core knowledge in Rook End Games, this technique. Mm -hmm. That's right. So many people got it right. Patriots, Pikachu, Hollow Blade, Wyatt, Legendary, Adi, Daniel, and so on. So please go ahead, uh, Patriots. I just take the first name that I see. Please go ahead, Patriot. What was your first move here? Exactly. So that's what we're calling. Yeah, I told you the pawn doesn't go that way. Cutting off the king. That's what we call this. 
So you can basically cut off the king in two ways. You can cut off the king like that vertically, and you can cut off the king also horizontally. But when you cut off the king horizontally, you can cut it off in two ways. You can cut it off like, like upwards or also downwards, which is less common, but it also exists in some endgames. So that's what Shevchenko played. There was another way to play. It's also possible to start with this move, but only if you play, I think, rook d6 next turn. If white plays just some move here, you should play this move anyway. So very important to, uh, to cut off white's king. White can try to build a bridge somehow. In the game they played here, Rapport played rook c3. And of course, uh, Shevchenko didn't play f5. Yeah. Uh, if f5, anyone, what would white play? Or should I quiz you on this? I can quiz you. Yeah, you get only uh, 15 seconds for this mission. White's move. Oh, I should flip the board, by the way. Hollow, Gordon, L, John, Sam, Brian. I'm just testing you here a little, testing your basic uh, rook uh, knowledge. Interesting, rook c6. I didn't think about that. That's perhaps also working. Yeah. Um, Possibly working as well. Looks a little more complex now. So I think Adi Chess, you have the simplest way to go here, right? Yeah, two less time. I know, I know. But also it's something very obvious that everyone should know. Now that the pawn has moved forward, exactly, we can carry out this uh, trade of rooks so that here, as you can see, if the pawn was still on f7, black would win by bringing the king to g5, for, exa for example. But uh, here... We can't make that happen. Mr. Chicky Dude is raising their hand. If there is any issue, you can just write in the chat, right? So, yeah, this is going to be a draw. The king will get there in, in time. So, yeah, of course, uh, Shevchenko didn't play like that. <laughs> he, he saw that. So he played in the game uh, rook d5 instead. So now, basically, black is ready to move the king up. I think his point was to create a bridge like that. Because if he goes up immediately... Maybe white would play something like that. I don't know. Is, is that a good assumption? Probably not, no. This would also be winning, right? If you played something like, like that. But here you would still have the issue that, all right, black would play something like this and white, I mean, and they would try to bring, bring in the king. So I think it's smarter what uh, he played in the game. Yeah, he put his rook on d5 to have this um, bridge uh, ready. Rook f3, king g6. Um, so now if rook here... Let's see if we understand the difference. Do we understand the difference? Or maybe it's about something else. Maybe it's about preparing f5. That's highly possible, right? And the king is coming. It's probably that. That's the reason why he played, played it, I think. Probably, yeah. So uh, what I ha learned when I studied this endgame a million years ago was that they start giving you checks, but you should always look for a square horizontally placed, sorry, diagonally placed two squares from the, from the pawn. And I think something like that happens in the game because he plays f5. Five, king c3 and king g5. And now you can see what black will do. Um, they will cope with the checks, but they will move the king to one of these two squares. They cannot reach the d3 square because white's king is there. So they will go to the h3 squares. I think everybody has seen this before. So maybe I'm wasting your time, but we will do this very quickly. All right. So this is what we're talking about. You put the queen king there and now you're ready to play uh, f4 and, and so on. And if rook here, you can play then king g2 and so on. Yeah, so I think everybody uh, everybody knew this already. Yeah, in the game he played, the rapport played king c4 and uh, rook d8. So this game, I think it was played maybe, was it last year? Uh, yeah, last year. So you see, this happens all the time. Those of you who think that rook and games are boring, well, please notice they are very uh, frequent in practice. This is not some old Rubinstein game. This is something from last year. Uh, two very strong grandmasters. So he played like we were discussing. He brought his king to this Key square, this is where the king should be, diagonally placed. I think it was Smyslov, maybe, who started checking these positions. And here, in the end, you can see white is like, white is dreaming about give, getting the king back, but they didn't make it. Black was too fast here. So, yeah, that was simple enough. Yeah, please notice the first move here. I will just quiz you, but uh, you will get only five seconds for this move. So, five seconds, please. Think quickly. Yeah, everybody got this right. Aha, please remember this uh, topic, this idea. I have even seen positions where, for example, a pawn was hanging. A pawn was hanging and we didn't take the pawn. We, we improved the rook first. That's good to know. I think I have an example like that in my Mastering Endgame Strategy book where strong women player played something like that. They didn't take the pawn. They played rook d4 instantly. Anyway, let's continue. Let's take our next example. This game was played just, I think... Uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. 
in the European, uh, sorry, in the World Team Championship. Yeah, World Team Senior Championship. World Team Senior uh, Championship. Interesting tournament. Uh, strong players from all times are coming back and showing their skills and, and so on. Very interesting. So here, White played like Tara said. What did Tara say? Tara said the rook behind the pass ball, right? The rook behind behind the pass ball. But this is the, I think this game was, uh, they are uh, 50 years and older. They are plus 50. So uh, yeah, Tabatabe, he could not participate here. You need to be over, yeah, exactly, North Macedonia. You have to be uh, older than 50 years or 50 years and older to play this tournament. So not everybody can play here, right? This is the tournament that you, you will play in <laughs> in many years from here. Not not right now. So let's see. White played in the game, rook a1. Like Dr. Tara said, put the rook behind the fast ball. Okay? I'll just quiz you for uh, the next uh, few moves here. Let's see. I'll pick one variation. Yeah. I think that's good enough. Yeah. All right. You get one minute. Yeah, Pia Kramnik, yeah, of course, very strong player. But I think in that uh, tournament, there was not, uh, no teams from Sweden, I think, participated. Or maybe there was. Yeah, but she was probably not there. Let's see. Uh, how did you do here? I have bad news for JM Chess and 206 and Gordon Legendary added chess. That's what Black played in the game. Good news for Brian. Brian, congratulations. You're the only winner so far. But I think there were a few other move orders. So Chess Sword and Hollow Blade, that's fine also. Um, Patriots and Wyatt, I don't think you should play that. I have a bad feeling about that. The same goes for Smart Goldfish and Daniel Best. You can try to refute me later if you like, but uh, I don't think that's uh, correct. Okay. Let's see who else. Okay, Connor, congratulations, Mr. Cheeky Dude. Awesome, Sarthak. We have Happy Pond. We have five winners here, I think. So. Uh, Brian, you were fastest. Please go ahead. What should Black play here? Of course, we just stick to the topic, right? We're doing it again, right? Again. But this time we're doing it for defensive purposes, right? Defensive purposes. We don't want their king to join the battle. That's why we do this. In the previous example, just to refresh your memory, uh, in the previous example, we had... Uh, yeah, which was the previous example, by the way? This one, no? Yeah, in, in the previous example, we used this technique, cutting off the king. To win the game but on this occasion we are going to use it to save a draw here that's that's what what we can do here right so after rook a7 rook a1 uh brian played rook f7 so basically what happens here is that we are denying white's king entrance now in the game i think unfortunately they played king g7 and white uh, hurried to run with the pawn and then they played king f2 and and they are winning you can see that in this kind of situation that will always be Tsukswang, right? Let's see, Brian, if I play... Okay, you have the black pieces. Let's look for a volunteer here. Uh, let's look for a volunteer. Um, Sarthak, you can take the white pieces. All right, Sarthak, how would you continue here? Let's see Sarthak's uh, endgame skills. How do you win here, from here? Exactly, Sarthak, that's right. You would like to push this pawn forward. Then you can use exactly... We use the space that we have gained from that pawn. I will have to play something like this. So what would be the technique to win here, sort like? Not very difficult, right? Yeah, h3 is everybody saying here. King d4, I think you can do that also. Yeah, I don't know. Should I try something like give check and, and hoping that I can run with the pawn maybe? Uh, yeah, now I will have to play, I don't know, rook here. I would say, sort like, even if this wins, I would not do it because I don't like the fact that my opponent gets counterplay, if that seems uh, reasonable to you. So try to play it safe, especially if you're down to like two minutes on the clock. You don't want to venture on such a scenario. So h3, all right, I'll play h5. So I have a question to make here. I will actually get back the pawn. Um, yeah, you can play like that uh, if you like, Sartak. That That's perfectly fine. And you can take and then bring in the king. But I would say even simpler, even simpler would be if you ask yourself, what would black do if they were to move? So if we ask ourselves that question, what... Uh, what uh, does uh, black play if, if exactly yeah they're kind of stuck if they oh i can't i can't write properly if what does black do if they are to move aha uh -huh. 
they don't they don't do anything. They lose on Tuxman, right? So you're you're completely right. Uh, Two hundred six. We should just lose the tempo like that. Look like that. I don't know what you would call this, like not triangulation, but something very similar. No, losing a tempo and you can come back. I have an example like that also, by the way, in my uh, mastering endgame strategy book. Something like that. It was Spassky Tal, maybe something like that. But it's an interesting technique. You can lose a tempo like that. Obviously, now blacks in Tuxwang. If the king comes back, we take the pawn with check. So that's a big difference here. And obviously, if they move the rook, we keep on running with our pawn. So that's what happens if we play it. Uh, in the wrong way, yeah, if you play it in the wrong way. But I like your move also sounds like G4. It was also possible, but I think this is more te te technical. Like, you could use this technique, for instance, if you take this position, let's see, we had this position, right? So sounds like said G4. If we take this position and let's make a little adjustment here. Let's put the black pawn on G4 instead. I hope this will work out properly, else don't get angry. If I give you this position, I would say that in this position, this is the only way to win. The one that we just discussed. You have to play like, like this, and yeah, like losing a tempo, right? Uh, I think so. Wrong, he says here. Uh, okay, sounds like is it wrong? What, what, uh, what is wrong? Oh, not about this position. So I think here the only way for white to progress properly would be to lose a tempo, to give black the the move instead, and you can do that by by losing a tempo like like that, and then come back. So yeah, sneaky little end game. Uh, trick that you can use in, in a variety of positions. Anyway, back to business here, back to what we were looking at. Uh, we were looking at this example. So I was interrupting somebody here after rook a1. Who was showing me this? It was Brian, I think. So please go ahead, Brian. Rook f7, exactly, Brian. That's what we should play, of course. And I understand why he didn't play that, because he, he said, no, first things, I have to bring in my king and so on and save this game. But this is a tricky endgame. Now we're cutting off white's king, which means that both sides will have a passed pawn. And obviously what black is after, uh, they are after trading these two pawns. They trade these two pawns and we are ending up with two versus one on one flank, which would be sing, sing, uh, sing, uh, simple draw. Yeah, an easy draw. So yeah, what can happen here? For, for instance, I think I played a4. And I think you can also play king g7. These moves are perfectly replaceable. Aha. Uh -huh. So I think what you played, uh, Ryan, you played e3 here simply. And here, here you can see a funny situation. We can actually continue. <laughs> and uh, if they play, for example, a6, uh, you could even put your king on, yeah, exactly, on g7. So if they play this, you should not be careful not to take the pawn. But you can use the trick that we talked about. We're just in time to, oh, trading a rook. I mean, to uh, promoting to rook, exactly, and we make a draw. So as simple as that. Uh, as simple as that. Rook a1. Looked like white was winning here. You would just say, oh, and the grandmaster brought up the king and used the outside pass not to win the game. Not true, not true. Rook f7 would have made a draw here. As you can see, white has no other real constructive plan. Of course, you could say, I don't want to trade off these two pawns. But ultimately, black will probably force them to do that. They can put the pawn there and put the rook here, for instance, and, and later on swing over the rook and take the pawn. So that was important. That was important. That's a half a point that, we, that, that they lost in this game. Motus with the black pieces lost this game due to this big mistake. King g7. You can see the conflict between two principles, right? One is active king, and the other one is restriction, what we are talking about here, cutting off the king. All right, should we continue maybe? I told you today's examples were not very difficult, but uh, I felt that we should uh, look at them anyway. It's not bad to repeat what we have learned in the past also. So let's uh, take another one. We're talking about different ways of cutting off the king. Wow, it takes so long time to upload these examples. Yeah, here we are, Bocharov versus Kuzubov, and you're playing with the black pieces. I would like to know how black should continue here. You can see that we are actually uh, down a pawn, but uh, <laughs> the pawn structure is very favorable for us. So three moves, please. How should black play their cards here? Uh, is it possible to play for a win even if we're a pawn down? Well, that can actually happen sometimes. L, as usual, is the first winner here. Congratulations, L. Uh, interesting move by Mr. Chiki and Kitty. I will play king e5 and I will try to trade off pawns. Trade off pawns will be my philosophy here. If I can leave you with one single pawn, I should be able to make a draw. So L, Sarthak, Legendary, HDI, Brian, Connor, you all found it excellent. Um, Patriots, I wouldn't do that. You're letting my king come back into business. Uh, Hollow blade, interesting. You change the angle of the rook, right? You change the angle. Kind King Sam did that also. Interesting. 
Gordon, that's perfectly fine. I guess if you play that, Gordon, I will play... Oh, I can't play Rook. Yeah, I think I will go Rook uh, E2 check there, Gordon, against your move. You go Rook E6 and I go back to A2. But okay, we will talk about that. We have more winners, I think. Wyatt, Ananya, Anant, GM. Yeah, a big group of winners here. So please go ahead, uh, Wyatt. We can take you first. It's the first name that I can see here. What would you play, Wyatt? Uh -huh. No, I think that's a mouse slip, right? I hope that's a mouse slip. You shouldn't bring the the rook uh, closer. No, the king, the king closer. Sorry, it, this is what I want, and try to come back. Uh, so many mouse slips. Yeah, that must be mouse slip. No, that check make, makes no sense. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is the storm move. No storm move. We don't let the king come back. Basically, to this side. No, we don't let the king come back. If you played anything else, that's what I will try to do here and trade off the pawns in one way or another. No. Uh, Rook e5, that's what Kuzubov played. He simply wanted to restrict White's king. He's already restricting White's rook. So that's a clever move. White played in the game king d7. Some of you were saying here, yeah, exactly, you're right, Wyatt. Some, some of you were saying this, but I think it's not the right path. I, I think I can come back and maybe try to take the pawn and so on. Um, hopefully. Or what do you think? Or, or could you play like that? Or maybe. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at this. Uh, Maybe I can't do this, no? I'm, I'm lost in the endgame. No, I'm not lost, right? I, I have this move. Or wake me up if I miss something here. Uh, if you do this, I think I'm, I'm very fortunate to make a draw like that, right? And if you do something else, I guess, yeah, if I have two, two extra pawns, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm just coming home and making a draw, right? So, yeah, very fortunate to write in this example, but only if Black plays it in the wrong way. Of course, Wyatt did something completely different here. Wyatt continues with the policy of restricting the opponent's king. Now the king is also far away from the pawn. Uh, let's see what happened in the game. They played king c7, and now black's plan is not very difficult. Of course, we're going to take, take the pawns. There was one last uh, interesting moment here, Wyatt. If you like, you can continue. Yeah, where would you put the rook? By simple comparison, there is a better place than the others, right? You have two squares, so why not attack the pawn just in case? So here, here this is the last moment to, to go wrong. Last moment to go wrong. Uh, okay, I'll ask uh, everybody, just for fun, just for fun. What would you play here, everybody? You get only 10 seconds, so you better f think fast. L, G, M, Patriots, Legendary, Gordon, Adi, aha. Uh -huh. Hollow Blade, HDI, Sarthak. Yeah, most people got it right. We just keep on restricting here. Okay, smart goldfish, please go ahead. What did you play here? That's what they call activity above material. Uh -huh. We could take the pawn, but why don't we wait a little longer? We can actually use our king to reduce counterplay. How could somebody go wrong? Well, uh, rook and games are difficult. What can I say? If you take on f4, I think I have uh, a draw in the pocket here. I take, and I think white can actually use our favorite method here. Anyone? Let's see here. I'll quiz you again. But you get only five seconds for this move, I think, because it's so simple. Okay, five seconds. Go for it, guys. Aha, everybody got this right. I'm happy to see that. Little chess player, you're one of the winners here. What would you play, little chess player? Aha, cutting off the king and actually preparing to just liquidate. I mean, it, it's probably more about liquidating than about cutting off the king. But anyway, nice, nice to see this uh, topic again. What about rook a5? What about rook a5? Yeah, I guess it gives me some chance of doing something like that or, or no. Uh, the king is very far away, right? So why why make it more difficult? Yeah, rook e5 is riskier. Exactly. I would play this move, I think, if I can't see anything else. So yeah, better not to risk too much. So nice uh, decision here by Wyatt, who simply played king uh, f5 instead, king f5. So we're actually following the game. That's what happened in the game. Uh, king b5 and yeah, Wyatt, you, you can just go back. And here, funnily enough, he used the same technique again. He made a waiting move here. Funny, funny. He could take the pawn also. By now, it's uh, we are winning by using the king in an active way. But he actually started with this move. Funny, funny. Why did he do that? I don't have a good uh, answer to that, actually. Uh, maybe he just wanted to show who is, the, who is the boss here. But then he took the pawn. Next turn, he took the pawn. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe to gain time on the clock. Yeah, it can be many reasons. H5, and yeah, this doesn't work, but... Nothing else worked either. And you can see that, again, pawns can be traded, but uh, white's king is not in the right place to stop the pawn. So 
yeah, that's how the game ended. Uh, White uh, fought to the bitter end, but it was not possible. This is how the game went. Yeah, it's a good moment to resign. So nice, uh, nice technique, no? By in this game, uh, Kuzubov with the black pieces, rook a five, cutting off the king. Uh, but on, in this way, I would say it's not that common, but it sometimes it can sometimes be done. This kind of cu cutting off the king. Okay, let's uh, take uh, next. Uh, yeah, maybe to get thirty seconds increment. You're right. That's another good uh, explanation. So we saw how we can use this technique to win the game. And let's see how we can use the same technique to draw the game. Now I will take a much uh, older example. This is a much older example where Black actually missed this uh, opportunity. It's an old game, uh, Borden with white and Clark with the black pieces from 1960. Yeah, that was a long time ago. So you can, safe to say, Rook and games, they have not changed that much. No, what Smyslov said many years ago, it remains valid up to this point and so on. Okay, basic information, the pawns are going this way, all right? Basic information for you. Uh, so white's two pawns up, usually that's enough. Uh, two pawns up, uh, usually enough to win a rook end game. I'm just writing this in the chat, rook end game. Uh, you could say a good, uh, a good approach, uh, give up one pawn to uh, yeah to, to help to assist the other one right to assist the other one that's the usual technique you give up one pawn to help the other one so black is playing here uh to make a draw this pawn is going that way this is also going that way you can see that they have managed to somehow limit white's king but white has a dangerous plan here white has a dangerous plan here so i would yeah pretty hard position to draw but actually the solution is very clear cut uh Sartak. it's very clear cut the solution so um, I can give you like some basic information. If, if you can take this pawn, you make it an easy draw, right? It's more dangerous the other scenario that somehow uh, white can maybe keep this pawn if the king cannot stay there and so on. Flip the board. I can't. If I flip the board, you get it with the white pieces, but that's not. Uh, <laughs> you're not playing white here. That would be much more fun. Anyway, just just for just for fun. Speaking of fun, yeah. Oh, we are trying to draw exactly. Just for fun. White's best move. Let's see, white's best move and plan. What would you play with white? Well, if you play b4, uh, it's not your move, right? It's not. Let's make one. Yeah, we don't have so many random moves, but if you play b4, uh, I could play. I cannot take it, right, because of rook h5. But if b4, I would go king b5, right? And I would try to give check and take your pawn. So after, after b4, king b5, if you go rook there, I will go back with the king and you're hanging the pawn so not so simple not so simple i think or is it yeah not so simple anyway that's not your task your task is with black you have only one move which will uh, save the game and the hint is that you should use our favorite technique to to do it all right you get only one minute go for it Black to play and make a draw here. I'm sorry, Sartak, I think that's what he played in the game. Yeah, you played like Peter Clark, which is in this case not a meritory. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, if you play that, Connor, I will go back with the king. So far, I have no winners. No winners so far. Wow, this was very difficult then. I see, I see. Yeah, we have a winner. Hollow Blade, congratulations. We have an endgame, rook endgame expert here. Their name is Hollow Blade. Well, probably not in real life, no, but uh, yeah, this is a tough one for sure. This is a tough one. No surprise that they missed it in the in the game. Anyone else is close? No. Gordon is also very close. Let's see, Gordon, if you go that way. Yeah, we can talk about that, Gordon. I'm thinking that maybe I have Rook H5 now. We will talk about that. We will talk about that. Uh, interesting. Anyone else? No, only Hollow Blade. Yeah, no, dif no difficulty picking the... Uh, the right uh, student this time. So please go for it, Holo. Show us what nobody else uh, noticed completely here. We have to play rook f2. Exactly. We have to cut the king off in this way. In the game, black played instead king b5. That's what they played. Normal waiting move. And now white started their key plan, bringing the king to the other side. They played king b2, getting ready to move the king to help the, the f pawn. That's what happened in the game. They played like this. Black tried to cut off the king, but white found this sneaky move. Why did they play this? Well, 
Zugzwang in the air now. Zugzwang in the air because, uh, yeah, why is that so important? By the way, I'm trying to, to remember what, what, why was that so important. Uh, the rook doesn't want to move. I don't want to move the king in in uh, in that way, I think, right? I don't want to move the king in that way. Wow, I, this was confusing for me also. Um, <laughs> anyone who th thinks they understand it? Uh, let's see here. What would be the right uh, uh, approach? I was thinking of, about this, actually. I don't know if this works like this. Oh, but king c4. No, forget what I'm saying. Sorry, I was hoping to cut off his king, but I cannot do that, right? So, yeah, what, what would we play here? Maybe we can just continue then with, with our plan, right? We can bring over the king. Is that possible? No, you cannot go there. They take the pawn. Yeah, this was hard for me also to understand. Uh, why would we win here? Interesting. Take, taking, no. Yeah, rook b5, maybe. King d4. In, in the game, they played king d5, just for the record. This is how they, oh, sorry. In the game, they played uh, king d5 and white gave check. And later on, they just pushed the pawn, b4. So why, why was this so strong? Wow, this was really complex. I think the point is that they go this way and we go that way, right? This must be the point. Yeah, exactly. So that what we were discussing. We give up one pawn to run with the other one. And now I think we're faster here, right? We're faster. We also win maybe one tempo. Um, does that does this make sense, or I'm, I'm missing something? Maybe I'm missing something here. Um, yeah, I'll, if you if you stay there, I will definitely run with the king. Uh, so I think that's the that's the big point here. Yeah. So probably that's also what follows in the other in the other case. If you play like that, I should just play b4. Yeah, simple as that. Or well, not not exactly simple, <laughs> but that's probably the the reason. Anyway, we can avoid all this if we play like hollow blade is saying. So. Back to hollow. What was the first move here? Still around hollow? Aha, rook f2, we don't let the king come back. And suddenly white has difficulties moving in this position. So this is definitely not a good idea. Just to see if everybody's awake here, you get for this move five seconds, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody was awake. Such a tragedies have happened in real life. Yeah, exactly. Rook A2. So don't do that, please. Uh, what happened in the, in the main line here? The game was something else. Uh, what would happen here? I can go B4. Uh, okay, Hollow, you can take the black pieces now. We just stay there. So here, when I, what, when I gave check, you just came back and I have to go back and you can just go up again and I can't progress here, right? I can't progress properly. As you can see this time, if the king goes back, we can simply take and we are much faster this time. Our king is coming coming faster this time. We can just bring the king in like that and yeah, nothing's nothing's gonna happen here. Um, yeah, what was the what was the line that uh, somebody said here? Rook f4, b4 and you said some other move here. King c6. Then, then maybe I go king a4, right? Now there is no mate anymore, right? So, um, so I think it's better to stay here to be annoying now and try to take the pawn. That's what I would think. But I think someone, somebody said, yeah, somebody said this move, right? Somebody said this move. So I think if you play that, I think, well, maybe you could play like that. I'm just thinking that we could use our favorite idea here and cut off the king. Now the king has to move away and I think we are ready to run with the... This looks like white is winning now. Interestingly, if you look at this, you can see that you're actually cutting off the king in two ways. I think Dvoretsky talked about this also. A good way to uh, cutting off cutting off the king twice. Yeah, okay, bye whoever had to live. Cutting off the king. Maybe it was too boring with these uh, endgames. <laughs> but I think they are useful though. So I think that's the smartest way of cutting off the king, if you can do that, like in both, both ways. So this would be easy to win, I suspect. Maybe you could just bring in the king and, um, yeah, not now, right? They would play rook, rook here. But you could probably prepare it like, uh, yeah, I, I have seen this before. You would probably pre prepare, maybe something like this simply, right? Just continue with the same technique. and You can come here and now you can 
uh, you can build a bridge for the king like that. And I, th I think, yeah, I think this is not not possible to save a draw here. Anyway, let's continue. So I hope this was clear to everyone. We limit the king this time. We limit the king like that. Let's take our next example, which is very practical. This is a mistake which anyone could make, I think. Let's see if I can bring it up. In this game played uh, earlier this year, uh, Matras with white and Stefansson with black. Okay, trivia. The last name Stefansson, which country does that come from? Anyone? Iceland, exactly. Typical last name in Iceland. Uh, there is uh, there are several strong players with this last name. I think Hannes Stefansson is the most uh, renowned one. But here it's actually younger. Uh, I think Grandmaster Vignir Stefansson who is playing with the black pieces. So Matras uh, has a draw in the pocket. Basically, this should be a draw. You can see that it's always good to look at the pawn structure, right? If we had this same position, but no rooks were on the board, I, I just want to make that clear to everyone. The evaluation changes drastically. Now, if you have this position, white is winning in their, in their sleep, right? Thanks to the uh, outside pass pawn. However, in our case, there are rooks on the board. So I'm just telling you this so that you keep in mind that if white can trade off the rooks, they will win this game. Um, but it's black who is pushing here because black is more active. So black played at this point uh, d3. They played d3 here. Yeah, exactly. So d3, it's easy to understand this move. Uh, we would like to bring in the king like that and, and, and yeah active king and so on um, so white can play in many different ways here there are several moves here i looked at a little of of everything uh, anyone would you like to suggest a move uh, for uh, white anyone rook d8 yeah i think rook d8 is also possible um, but i think i have this move uh, hollow i'm breaking my own principle now no opponent games here but the thing is that I'm very fast. I'm very fast to, to help the, the past pawn. You would have to play something like, like this, but you can see I can go for that pawn and I'll run with the H pawn. I'm very fortunate that you don't queen me when, I mean, you don't check me when you queen me. So uh, I think white is uh, not uh, in good shape here. Yeah, should we continue or it's clear to everyone? Yeah, we can look at this, of course. So A5 and I'm very fortunate that the pawn is there. Yeah, thanks. Thanks that that pawn is around. <laughs> and you can see that. In the end, black will queen and have good winning chances. So this we should not uh, allow, right? This we, we should not allow with white. Else it was a good principle, no rook in the back. Uh, sorry, in this position, rook d8. I think that's troublesome for white. But there were other moves here. There are several moves that you can play here. Um, yeah, anyone would like to propose something else? Rook b3. Yeah, rook b3, I guess you're inviting king d4. Uh, that looks unpleasant again, right? Or, or you mean you will give check now? But I don't think this is making sense, no? I think this is dangerous for you. I think I can play in the same way with king e3, and I think only I'm queening here. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think black is winning now. So, yeah, we cannot play like that. All right, anyone else? No, no problem. Nobody's dumb here. We are simply trying to understand this position. I'm not giving you any time also. But okay, please remember, when you're sitting here, you are down to like three minutes. So you have to think fast. King c1 is a very good move. That's an uh, excellent choice. We are just bringing in the king to... Uh, uh, to Yeah, we, we accept to be a pawn down, but then we can bring in the king and probably make a draw like that. That's what I would play, I think. Something like this. And yeah, they can have this pawn and I'll, I'll find my way to make a draw here somehow. Uh, yeah, rook... Uh, rook f8 should be that, maybe? Rook f8. Yeah, I, I don't think black will win this game for sure. Yeah, white should be making a draw here easily. Uh, White is active enough. Or maybe we should actually go this way. So that we, yeah, probably that way, right? To control the rook. So, yeah, something like that is an excellent choice. Just abandon the pawn. But that's difficult for most people to give away their pawns like that. <laughs> and look what happened in the game. There were, by the way, other, there were other ways to play also. Yeah, I looked at something else here also. Um, what was my other variation? Yeah, let's see very quickly. King c3. Oh, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, king c3. And then that's for me the, the most natural way of playing. Yeah, I give up something, but I bring my king to back to business and I manage to trade off pawns and so on. Aha! All right. So what happened in the game was that white played this move instead. Okay. Let's see if I can bring up the quiz. Let's see here. Let's see if we can bring this up. 
like that and uh, yeah i think we we just need two moves here so uh, you get only 45 seconds for this you're playing black by the way so i flipped the board now uh you can't do that right can you l and brian you're losing the game i think if you play like that l brian Sarthak, Wyatt, I think you're wrong, but we will see. Chess Art and HDI, I think you're right. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I missed something, uh, but I don't think so. <laughs> I told you, it's a tricky endgame. No, not surprising that uh, black, uh, that white went wrong also in this game. Uh -huh. So congratulations to Chess Art, HDI Chess and Adi Chess. You all have in common that chess is part of your handle and also you have in common that you found the right solution here. So please go ahead, chess art, enlighten us. How should we continue here with the black pieces? Aha, we bring in the king, and after rook takes f5, white was probably thinking that black would just continue to run with the king. Uh, but black had something smarter prepared here. So here we are, our favorite idea, cutting off the king. That's what happened in the game. After that, no way out for, uh, for white. Please notice, guys, you have to do this in the way that... Uh, Chess art is doing it. If you do it here, it's it's a uh, gigantic blunder because now I can actually trade off the rooks. And you don't have the scenario with the queening anymore. Yeah, I can just go with the king to to c1 maybe or I don't know. And white will win this game, right? Uh, thanks to the outside pass ball. So don't do that, please. Yeah, don't do that. That's a that's a very costly mistake. So it's much better as uh, chess art is saying. We start with king d4. To bring in the king and when they take the pawn yeah white must have I, i'm i'm thinking about what did white consider here white was probably thinking that black would play like this and they would give the check and they would take the pawn and if the pawn moves the king gets closer and if the rook comes down they were probably hoping to like take and and come back with the rook something like that must have been in white's mind during this game but they forgot about chess arts move here so please go ahead uh, chess out That's a different story, right? Exactly. We don't let the king get any closer. So that's how the game went. We can continue. Let's see what happened next. They played in the game rook f8 and black won here very quickly. Yeah, you can make a few more moves if you like, uh, chess art. Are you still around? You can make a few more moves. Uh huh. I don't get any moves from chess art. It's not very difficult. I th even think you have like multiple choice. Yeah, exactly that I would not play, but. Uh, you want to take the pawn, really? Yeah, that maybe is also working. Yeah, okay. No hard feelings. You can play like that. Else you could just, uh, like Hollow Blade is saying, yeah, we could just bet on the pass pawn and play d2. In the game, he played uh, d2 immediately. And it's easy to say that white is lost now because, uh, yeah, we can always uh, bring our king a little closer. Um, they are tied up and, and maybe we can ultimately win the game also by... By pushing the H pawn, so this was terrible. Yeah, no problem, chess art. Yeah, no, no hard feelings. So, uh, I hope this example was interesting to you. Very, very tricky endgame. First things to understand here is that uh, we have to be careful, both with white and black in this endgame. Black played a clever move here, d3, clearing a path for their king. Uh, white did not pay attention fully to this plan. They should have played something like uh, some of you were saying: give up a pawn to. Uh, to simplify and get to a two versus one endgame, something like that. But in the game after d3, they incorrectly started eating pawns, and they were severely punished for that due to this uh, with this star move rook c4. Aha! Uh -huh. So very very important uh, this this technique, uh, cutting off the king. So let's take our next example, uh, and this is another tricky one. Yeah, this is a, this is a nice one. Let's see who can figure this out. Very very interesting rook endgame. Uh, one of the best uh, female players on the planet, uh, Shuvalova with white, and we have experienced uh, Indian Grandmaster Ganguly with the black pieces. They ended up like this. This game was played last year in the Tata Steel. <coughs> so I'm basically asking you, yeah, this is a tricky endgame. Let's see if we can understand it together. Um, you can see that black is a pawn up, but the rook is in a funny place. It's not a good place for the rook. It cannot move because white will probably go and take the pawn. White is hoping for some kind of scenario 
where they can uh, sacrifice they can sacrifice for for the black h pawn and then trade off these two pawns and make a draw on the on the king side right on the queen side right because black's king is very far away um so I'm basically yeah it's a very interesting position there are many things that's that are going on here so uh you have a bunch of candidate moves here she found the right way in the game and she managed to make a draw here yeah draw is enough for us in this in this case but it's a tricky position so uh, don't forget that also if you move the king to some place like that uh chances are high that you're checked and black queen so be careful with that please all right i'll start the quiz think about how you can save this game um, it's not that difficult but it's also not that simple i would say let's see we will go up to this point i think like that yeah longest quiz for today you will have to do this uh like f five six moves okay take your time take your time please don't send me any moves uh that's too that's too soon how can you play that hollow and south like you're missing my my point here i didn't want to give away the whole story look for yourself what i will do there i will simplify and i will win with a lone f pawn right the f pawn will win the game for me so i'm sorry that's the wrong path the same goes for chess art patriot 206 that's not gonna work why everybody wants to play like that wow legendary goat that's a very interesting move but i i, I can't imagine that it will work right you're giving me two connected past pawns wyatt you're liberating my king uh gordon you're also liberating my king you're letting my king get closer l we have a first winner here <laughs> okay like they say sometimes, uh, I think Tony Miles said that, right? The art of doing nothing. Was that Tony Miles or it was somebody else who said that? The art of doing nothing, but to do it well or something like that. Yeah. The art of of doing nothing. Brian, smart goldfish. Yeah, I could have told you that before, but then I, I would give away the story, right? Um <laughs> HDI, I think that's okay also your move, but but I can take the pawn and you, yeah. Connor and Daniel, that move has an ugly uh, appearance, no? We will talk about your move, we'll talk about your move. Uh, okay, so three winners here, L, Smart Goldfish and Ryan. Uh, yeah, Smart Goldfish, you can take it this time, okay? You can take it. So it turns out that actually Black has no real threat. That's what Smart Goldfish noticed. So we should just continue doing what we love to do, at least in this class, cutting off the king. We don't let the king get any closer, right? Don't get the, let the king get any closer. Before we continue with this, we should, of course, check the other moves here. Uh, well, there aren't many moves. King takes a6, that's a bad blunder. Uh, should I quiz you on this? I can quiz you. Yeah, I remember that it's Smart Goldfish who, who got the right answer. I will quiz you very quickly just to see that we are on the same page here. Uh, yeah, but you get only 20 seconds for this because it's very simple. So black to play and win, all right? Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. That was not difficult, right? You should have seen this. All of those who said king takes a6, it was a piece of cake for you to see how, how black would win here. So that's surprising, no? Okay, please go ahead. Uh, Gordon, you can show us, Gordon, how... How do you continue here with the black pieces? Okay, we should look at this from black's perspective, by the way. Yeah, bad idea, bad idea to take the pawn. Suddenly black trades off these two pawns, which means that white's king will be far away from the battle. And uh, you can, who, what is that, uh, Sarthak? St stop that spamming now, it's annoying, Sarthak. You can do that maybe at some other moment. Focus on chess, please. Yeah, no spam, please, please, let's behave properly. Today you have behaved well, but I, I don't like that. That's funny. Yeah, it's a bit too far. All right, please continue. Who was playing here? Gordon. Yeah, please go ahead, Gordon. You have two good moves, so pick either one. Pick either one. That's why I didn't. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can take that pawn first. And we take this and it's bye-bye because, uh, yeah, what, what can I possibly do here? I'm, I'm too far away, right? I'm too far away. Just make sure you take this pawn before anything else. And yeah, you can maybe use our favorite uh, method here. Keep the king cut off yeah i would go one step yeah yeah i understand you want to play like that yeah fine fine you cut it off like like that then and then we can just continue white's king any, in any case white's king is too far away so we can't play that exactly we can't take because black achieves 
favorable trades. Uh, other moves are also not clever. No? Rook f8, you invite me to play king g4. This is a little too, uh, too clever to be true. I can just take it, right? And I can maybe play like that. So the only move is the one that, uh, who was this? Um, Smart Goldfish was explaining. So please go ahead, uh, Goldfish. We're back with you again. Blacks, whites only move here. Just keep the th things the way they are right now. We don't let the king get any closer. So the Indian Grandmaster played here. Um, yeah, if it was white to move again, you could just go back, of course. So it's not like you're in troops one. You always have one move here. In the game he played, yeah, if king h6, we could safely safely go back, right? We can sa safely go back. So in the game he played, um, what did he play in the game? Rook e1, rook e1. And now, yeah, now or never, of course. Uh, we have to get rid of that pawn. King g4. Uh huh. So black try their best to confuse things. You can see that if they take the pawn, white will sooner or later sack on this pawn. You can do this in different ways. Um, maybe the simplest would be to play something like this and and then take the pawn and wait for them to play f3 and yeah, I don't know, put the rook in the in the back. As soon as they are about to, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm actually missing this uh, cheap tactic. No, I should not do this. So probably you should just take the pawn here and. And this should be a draw, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think black is way too slow here to stop white's plan. So yeah, that's not the right uh, place for the king right now. Aha. So um, in the game, he played the sneaky move here, rook e6, desperately trying to keep that pawn on the board. So we're back on the topic of last time, tying the opponent's king to their pawns. If you played rook g2, like some people were saying here, I haven't checked this carefully, but this looks very annoying, no? This looks very annoying. If rook here, I can go king f2, and I think I pick up the pawn. Let me know if I'm missing something here, but it seems to me that white is in huge danger. No? Yeah, it looks bad for white. I agree, Holo. So don't do that, please. Don't do that. Also, it's a it's an ugly place for the rook in general. No, the rook doesn't like such such tasks. So uh, yeah, you're right, uh, smart goldfish. Rook f2, of course, that's what she played in the game, getting ready to... Uh, to, to sack, actually, to sack, because black played rook f6. I guess he was just, he wanted to see simply if she had understood the endgame, and she had, of course, understood it. So you can continue if you like, uh, smart goldfish. Exactly, rook check. And yeah, if they go back, they are not progressing, right? So uh, they took in the game, and you can easily imagine. First look for counterplay. Exactly, if there is nothing better than hollow blade, then we can go for the passive defense. But that should usually be our last uh, resort, yeah. Yeah, no way to win this. We can look at what happened in the game. That's maybe the simplest way of understanding it. But the king is too far away for this. It's a typical... Uh, one of the best endgames, I would say, for the defender is this king and pawn versus king and rook. Very often you make a draw in those endgames. So, yeah, that's how the game went. I think there are, white has many tempi. White is many tempi ahead. The king could be a little closer and it would, it would still be a draw here. So, yeah, this was drawn very, very soon here. Or maybe not. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was actually only one way. Yeah, probably it was just by one tempo. That's usually what happens in these endings. Yeah, don't go, don't go the other way, please. Don't go the other way. Yeah, uh, don't do that. Uh, or sorry, like how is it? Like like that and this and and mate something like that, right? So that that's a good technique also. Never block your own pawn unless you have to do it, right? Like if you're stalemating yourself, but else always have the pawn free so that it can move on free something like that so king seven wins yeah exactly exactly so i think we should uh, request this one now we should request this one uh, just to make sure that everybody understood this because we had only one winner and i would like there to be a little more so let's see if we can get this right if we can walk in the footsteps of shuvalova in this game um, very precise defense very precise defense she did Everything right here in this endgame. Uh -huh. um, all right, but we are, we saw this already, so you get only uh, thirty seconds, I think, for for this mission. All right, so good luck, everybody. Aha, great work. GM, Sarthak, 206, Connor, Smart Goldfish, Daniel, Holo, and uh, Sarthak, uh, Chess Art, and so on. Yeah, many people, Brian, HDI, and so on. Everybody got it right. Nice, nice. We can have a Daniel. Daniel, please go ahead.
Can, could you please show us the moves here, Daniel? I think I gave you the white pawn, right? Yeah. Please go ahead, Daniel. Aha, rook g7. We are just waiting. They don't have a threat at this point. Rook e1 was played by the Grandmaster. Aha. Now we need to eliminate this pawn before it queens, of course. There is still one pawn left, so we cannot just sack like that. We need to, to trade off more pieces. Yeah, rook e6. Very clever try. That's what you should do in these endgames, even if you know that it's a draw, perhaps. Try to confuse things if you're 